So guys, we are back again with another color grading tutorial. Um, this one we're going to be doing a color grading tutorial of Sam Colbert. But before we get into any of that, I just wanted to mention, just to go and check out my Instagram, that is Sebastian underscore JWB. Uh, yeah, go check it out if you like some of the photos. Don't forget to follow it. Also, you can check out my brother. He's also called Matthew underscore GKB. These are some of his photos. So if you want to go check us out and follow us on Instagram, that would be absolutely awesome. Okay, so as I said, today we're going to be doing a color grading tutorial of Sam Calder. Now, before we get into this, I just want to say really briefly, this isn't uh, me telling you to go out and directly copy his style. I'm just saying if you wanted to get a similar look or take a, an idea from his photos, this is how you go about doing this. I highly recommend you just go and create your own style and do your own thing. Now, with that said, what you want to take into account before you do anything with color grading is you want to make sure you take a photo that is in a very similar style to what Sam Gold does. Um, so you'll see he has got these sort of evening shots um, and all of his photos have this nice teal and blue shot. So for example, this one has got some really, really bright oranges and the sort of blues. Okay, so today we're going to be color grading this photo here. Now we're going to be trying to take it from this to this color grade. Um, and you'll see, if I go back onto his photos, you'll see that it is a very uh, similar color grade to his photo. Now the first thing you do want to do is come into the crop and you want to crop it to a 4 by 5 ratio just because that is what um, Instagram's portrait mode is. So once we've done that we're going to just mess around with the basic slider. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is increase the temperature just a bit so I'm going to bring it up to about 5200 something around there just because I want to bring a bit more of the orange into the sky because of course it is a sunset. Now with the tint really don't want to do too much of this I'm going to bring it up to probably about plus two okay so the next thing we're going to want to do is we are going to want to make this uh, image a lot brighter because obviously these shadows are incredibly dark and you can see here his highlights are incredibly blown out so if we come over to this slider here we're going to bring up the exposure to about plus 0.3 something like that um, and we're going to mess around with the shadows in a minute to bring those up. Now he does have a fair bit of contrast in his images, so I'm going to bring up the contrast slider to about plus 20. I'm actually going to bring the highlights down to about minus 70. Now I know I said he has overexposed highlights, but we are going to be dealing with that later in the HSL slider. Uh, the next thing we want to do is bring up the shadows and we're going to want to bring them up quite a bit probably to about plus 60 something like that now the reason this is obviously going to change a lot for your image but because mine is a sunset photo and the shadows are really dark i'm going to need to bring it up by about that much now as for the whites and black sliders we're going to bring them up by about 20 30 something like that in the whites and we're going to bring the blacks down to about minus 30 as well. Now this will add a bit of vibrance to your image. So we are going to bring down the saturation to about minus 25 and the vibrance we're going to bring up to about probably plus 20, something like that. Now the last thing you can see is the clarity slider. We are going to bring the clarity down by about minus 20, something like that. And um, you can see his images actually are quite soft. Um, he does have some clarity in some of them. So for example here, he has high contrast and maybe a bit of clarity as well, but we can mess around with that um, a bit later on. So if I bring up the clarity, it does look like that. So we're going to leave it at minus 20 for the time being and might come back to it. Okay, so the next thing is the tone curve. Now what you're going to want to do is just select this button down here, which means you've got the tone curve, which allows you to put these dots on it. Um, I don't like using this tone curve. Right, okay, so we're going to want to bring up the uh, mid highlights and we're going to create basically just your, your standard S curve. And we're going to do it probably about this much, maybe about there, um, and we're also going to do it about there. So now you probably will notice in some of his photos, not all of them, he does have a slight fade in the blacks, especially some of his older ones, like here for example, those blacks are slightly faded out. So we are going to put a tiny bit of fade going on. We don't want to do too much because otherwise it can look very vintage. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the hue slider. Now, as I said earlier, he does have that orange and teal look. So what we're going to do is bring up the reds to about plus 20 just to bring some more of those oranges in. So on about plus 20. Now with the oranges, we're just going to leave them possibly where they are, maybe bring them down by about minus seven, something like that. You don't want to bring it too far either way, otherwise it can go too pink or too, uh, too green. 
Um, as with the yellows, we're going to bring those down all the way to minus 100, and also with the greens all the way to minus 100. Now, as for the aquas and blues, I'm going to bring the aquas up just a touch to about plus 40, something like that. That's just to keep some of the blue in the image while we then bring down the blues to about minus 20, which will give us that teal look. Now you can see if I bring it all the way down, we get this really green look up here, which doesn't actually look that nice. Uh, so we're going to bring that down to about minus 20, something like that. Now as for purples and magentas, there are really no purples or magentas in this photo, so we're just going to leave those on zero. Now obviously with your photo it may be different, you may find that actually you've got a lot of purples and magentas um, and less of each colour, so you may have, may have to adjust it differently. You can see that we are gradually getting there towards his image. Now the next thing is the saturation slider. He has, um, again, his oranges and greens are fairly saturated as you can see up here and around the base of the pool. So we're going to bring up the saturation the uh, for the reds up to about plus five, something like that. Um, the oranges really just probably to about one, not an awful lot. Um, now the yellows and greens we're going to bring down the green yellows by about minus 60, just because we don't want the oranges to be totally saturated and too oversaturated. Um, now for the aquas, we're going to bring the aquas up to about plus 10, and we're going to bring the blues down to about minus, uh, probably about minus 50 something. Other than the ones where he's got a pool in shot, or he's somewhere tropical, for example, like this, where the blue is the main focus of the image, you will see that he does desaturate his blues really quite heavily. So obviously the sky here is really quite desaturated. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is the luminance slider. Now this is really where we're gonna get the exposed highlights like Sam Calder does have in his photo here. He has a really overexposed highlights. Again, in this photo, the highlights are kind of overexposed. Now you can see he does fade out his white slightly. So what I might do is come back up to the tone curve and, and just fade out the whites ever so slightly to about there. Uh, we're going to bring the luminance red slider up to about plus 35, something around there, and we're also going to bring the oranges up. Okay, so now we've done the reds and the oranges, the last, uh, we're just going to head on to the yellows, and we're also going to bring those up to about plus 40, something like that. So we are bringing up the uh, reds, oranges, and yellows by quite a bit when you look at it, um, but that is also because, like I said, he has a very overexposed highlights. So the next thing we're going to do is the greens, we're just going to leave those there and the aquas at zero. Now the blues, bring the blues up to about plus 40. Now we're going to do a before and after just by pressing the backslash key. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is the split toning. Now if you come over to Sam Calder's uh, picture you can see in the highlights he has a very slight blue in his highlights, especially in this one he has a bit of blue in the highlights and in the shadows he also has a slight blue going on as well. Um, but it's a very, very slight amount, so we're not really going to do too much. Now we're going to put in a value of 310 in the highlights, and we're really going to only saturate that probably to about maybe 6 or 5. Yeah, we're going to put that actually more at about 224. Now in the shadows, we're going to have just a blue at 214, and we're going to bring the shadows up probably to about 12, something like that. So very slight change, but you can see it does have a bit more of the teal and orange look going on. Now we're going to leave lens corrections alone. What you could do, uh, you could come into profile um, and then you could select your camera and the lens. And what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of some of this vignetting in the background. Um, and it's also going to sort out that distortion. In fact, actually, I think I am going to do that. Now that's totally optional, up to you. Sometimes it doesn't really do anything to your image. Okay, so the next thing is vignetting. Now. Sam Calder doesn't really do a lot of vignetting in his photos. You'll see he has a slight amount around the corners here, but not particularly heavy, and even in some of them he doesn't have any at all. What we are going to do in our photo is we're going to put in a very, very small amount, probably around minus 20. We're going to bring the feather all the way up, um, and we're also going to bring up the highlights as well. In fact, I may even put that um, at about minus 12. Okay, so the last tab we need to work on is camera calibration. Now, this is where it becomes most important because in Sam Calder's photos, you can see he does have a teal and orange look going on. Now, you can see that most specifically in this photo here. This is one of his more saturated photos, and the way that's achieved is partially through the HSL slider, so you get that more orange look going on, but a lot of it is achieved in the camera calibration slider. Now to do this, we're going to want to bring up the hue in the red primary um, to about 30. Now you can bring it all the way, 
um, and then also the way to do it is bring down the blue primary and you can see you get this very obvious teal and orange look. Now we're not going to want to go that extreme so we're going to put the red primary at about plus 30 and the blue primary at about minus 17. So you can see it actually does have quite a large effect on the image and then you can obviously adjust it a bit more to your liking, maybe add a bit more red primary and maybe add a bit more blue primary. Um, and then you can also mess around with the sliders here just to increase and decrease the saturation if you think you've overdone it in one colour. Okay, so one thing you can do to add a bit more of that teal look is just bring the shadows down to about minus nine, just add a bit more green into the shadows. And you can see the effect that the camera calibration slider has on the overall image. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna to want to do, we're gonna head back into the basic slider and we're just gonna bring up the shadows maybe up to about 70 plus 80. Now lastly what we're going to want to do is mess around with these gradient tools. Now each image is different, each image will need a different amount of gradient tools and it may even not need them at all. Now in terms of this image I think we're going to need to put a gradient tool just in the top right just to fade out some of those highlights and bring them uh, a bit of the colour back in. So, okay so what I've done is I've brought down the exposure to about minus one, I've brought the contrast and highlights down completely and I've brought the shadows up. All that's done is it's given us a bit more colour going on in the sky and then what I've done is I've brought the saturation down to about minus 65 because we don't want it being too oversaturated in the sky because as I say Sam Calder has a very desaturated sky, uh, very desaturated blues like in this image here. So we're getting a very similar colour up here as he has got there. Now we're going to also bring a, another slider up here. Just reset all of that. We're going to bring the shadows up as well just simply because I like to make sure there's no unevenness in lighting in the image. Um, one thing I am going to do is bring up the clarity slider just a little bit to about plus 20. All I'm really doing here is making sure the lighting on this side is the same as the lighting on this side of the overall image. Okay and then maybe bring the exposure up ever so slightly as well. This is the before this is the after. If we do go ahead and compare that to uh, one of Sam Calder's photos you can see we are a very similar photo. That is basically how you would color grade like Sam Calder. Uh, if you guys want to see any more videos like this don't forget to leave a comment uh, and any suggestions of videos you want to see. Now we will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Live long and prosper.